Uh, and you were kind of describing this to me a little bit early on. So it's very similar to a Puma. However, I think the phrase you used was glass cannon. It seems to go down much quicker to just kind of incidental fire. Yeah, many many of the Panzer Elite units just in and of themselves are glass cannons. And this this uh, unit in the armored car is pretty much the epitome of it. It's got paper thin armor. It's damaged by. I mean, I've seen engineers take it down. I've got a <laughs> replay up of, of myself playing as Americans, where I killed it with three jeeps. <laughs> and but uh, on the on the flip side of that, it has extremely high firepower. It's got a, a cannon uh, that's you know superior even to the Pumas. And it's got incredible speed and maneuverability. It's also got an overdrive ability for 25 munitions and a bit of fuel drain for the duration of it. That lets it just zoom around the map. And in addition to the firepower uh, gain you get from having this, it also uh, helps deny the primary U.S. advantage uh, over the Panzer Elite early game and being able to uh, cap the opposite side of the map because if you have a pair of armored cars and you can just zoom over to the other side of the map and stop any capping action he may have going on. Gotcha, just because you're, you're necessarily going to have to have your one uh, your one little Ketten, uh, your Ketten crowd on one side of the map or the other? Well, not so much as that as the, the rifle harass. Oh, okay. Because he'll send, you know, he'll have his main group over on your side, you know, attacking you and, you know, threatening to decap your cutoff or your fuel or whatever. But then he'll also have like an engineer and a rifle on the other side of the map. And because of the way Panzer Grenadiers are and having to work in numbers, if you don't have a, a majority of your force, he can come over and force a retreat really easily. And the armored car gives you enough power and mobility to be able to go and interdict those actions. Gotcha. And uh, right now, we also see you're going straight up to your Panzer Support Command right now. So what's uh, what's the unit that you're shooting for in this matchup right now? Uh, that's going to be the, the light anti-tank half track. Because at this point, well, until that bar just fired, I had seen uh, gotcha. no upgrades from him at all. And the safest thing to do against Panzer Elite is a fast M8. Mm -hmm. Because rifles, unupgraded rifles and flamethrowers can do a real number on even upgraded Panzer Grenadiers uh, up until the mid-game when they start gaining veterancy. And uh, the you know they have to get the fast armored car out in order to really be able to dominate the U.S. player and start pushing him off the field. The armored car can do nothing against an M8, and so it forces the Panzer Elite to drop two, uh, 200 manpower and 30 fuel into the building, as well as an additional 260 and 15 into the uh, the half track. Gotcha. And so it's kind of forcing the Panzer Elite player's hand. Nice. Okay, so that's just like one of those game theoretical decisions there. Like, had had you seen the Browning a little bit earlier, uh, you might have been more aware that the fast M8 Greyhound wasn't a wasn't a possibility. Yeah, I there, if if I'd seen those bars earlier, I wouldn't have even built the building yet. Gotcha. Well, that's still cool. Uh, so again, we we still see just this armored car just wrecking up here. Uh, I think you're doing a great job of microing it, keeping it sort of out of harm's way, and also just repairing it on the field. Uh, I like the combination of just keeping it really close to the Grenadiers uh, in all these little operations. Yeah, the armored car is as strong as it may be by itself. It's exponentially stronger when it's sitting behind your Panzer Grenadiers, acting as fire support. And you know, just ever after every firefight, just start repairing it up again because it is made out of paper. And a couple of Panzer Grenadiers can get back to full health pretty quickly, and you just need to be able to preserve the veterancy on it. Gotcha. And speaking of veterancy, we talked about this a little bit before, and uh, for people who are not aware, uh, you have to choose between armored or, or you know, offensive or defensive veterancy. And oh no, Mr. Ketten Crab just got Ketten Crab just got destroyed in the center there. Uh, you have to choose between offensive and defensive veterancy there. So what's your logic? Uh, obviously, you've picked uh, the little shield on the armored car as defensive, but a couple of your other guys have those little uh, ammunition-style offensive upgrades on them. What's your What's your theory behind that? Um, it just pretty much goes unit by unit. Uh, um, it just goes, really it's, it has to do with how the unit's going to be used. For the G43s, for example, I want to keep them at range most of the time, but uh, I need them to still be dealing out as much damage as I can, so I give them the offensive upgrades which allow them to... And wow, what a massacre in the center there. right there. You got to see all of your forces just kind of combine all at once. So you had those, uh, those ranged veterancy uh, Panzer Grenadiers uh, combined with the guys with the... Uh, the MP44s uh, and the armored car. You just wrecked a ton of riflemen there. Sorry, continue telling me about about your range and defensive uh, mentality there. Um, for the G43s, you want to give them offensive veterancy just because they're going to be staying at range, usually more or less out of the line of fire. 
and you want them to be able to deal as much damage as possible. On the, the complete flip side of that, with the Sturmgewehr squads, they're going to be charging across usually some open ground. They're going to be right up in the enemy's face, and so you need them to be able to take some punishment. And, you know, the Sturmgewehrs do a good job of killing stuff already, so you don't really need to upgrade their offensive power, but the, the defensive power can, you know, always be impre uh, improved. Gotcha, and the same logic applies to the armored car, I'm sure. Oh, which just hit a mine, it looks like. Damn mines. Uh, not so much for the armored car. Vehicles get uh, an increased defensive bonus at veterancy level 1, where it's the, uh, each level, for levels 2 and 3, they'll get 5% reduced damage, reduced penetration, and such. At level 1, they get 10% uh, reduced. Gotcha, okay, so that's a, just a better deal. Then yeah. for your first veterancy. So are you planning on going offensive, perhaps with the armored cars? You get higher veterancy. Yes, yeah, so for armored cars, I will always go defensive, offensive, offensive. Gotcha. Just as they'll do retarded amounts of damage, <laughs> max range with double offensive. Oh man! And speaking about offensive, we have oh, this massive yeah. push coming through the middle right now with all of the riflemen, uh, bars, and vet two. And there we see, unfortunately, the glass cannon does go down right there to uh, focused. Browning automatic rifle fire there. Yeah, there's no way to get away from that sticky when I already got a damaged engine. So. And now we've been seeing a lot of them. we've been seeing a lot of mines, and now we're actually seeing riflemen dropping mines. So this is probably the first queue so far in this game that you're fighting an infantry commander whenever you catch them. Doing yeah, that. exactly. As soon as I see that, I know he's going infantry, and so I kind of got a got a good idea that I, that I'm not going to be seeing an M8 because he's very likely if he's already chosen infantry. He's probably going to be getting rangers. There's no reason to get a howitzer this early. He's going to be going down the left-hand side after defensive operations. So, you know, if once you got rangers and rifles and bars, you're not going motor pool. Gotcha. And uh, again, massive shootout in the middle here. Uh, great use of cover, and already you can see that your guys are just dealing out the damage pretty intensely here. Yeah, and already I just full killed two squads right there. One Jeez. of them on the retreat, <laughs> the second one before he even knew it was happening. <laughs> Now, uh, when, you, when you're mic going these situations, are you focusing an entire squad all at the same time? Like, you have all three of your guys focusing right down on a single squad, or do you just let them ch choose their target? Oh my god, nobody survived that! <laughs> I think I think this one medic here carrying a gentleman was the only survivor there. Uh, but yeah, yeah how, do you, how do you handle micro in that situation? Are you, are you picking out individual squads, or do you just kind of let them freeform? Usually, you want to, to focus fire down individual squads, especially against bars when you need when the, you know the bar is just going to get passed off to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy you need to get the squad off the field mm -hmm. because the, the the BAR is what's going to be really tearing you up and uh, the only the only real exception to that is especially on this map there's a lot of shot blocking uh, objects that are sometimes really difficult to see and you click to focus fire and half your squads jump out of cover ah. and so that's something you really want to avoid because cover is the most important thing for G43 squads. Gotcha. Yeah, that was a lot of victory. So I'm going to take, for the first time ever, I'm going to take a point, jump over here to uh, Yo's point of view here. Again, he hasn't built any commander uh, abilities that I can see yet, but we can see he is down to three rifle squads and two engineers. So uh, he's been spamming rifles, apparently. Uh, and has been taking horrendous losses. However, however, uh, he is getting his tank yard up, uh, his tank depot up, and you can see uh, at the exact same time it looked like you just finished building uh, your tank hunter. So really good yes. timing there. Was that just a perfect called shot on your part? Uh, again, like I was saying earlier, I was not expecting an M8, and because of the place, I was, I was more or less expecting a tank depot, and so I figured, you know, I'm floating a decent amount of resources. There's no reason I shouldn't go ahead and get a martyr out just mm -hmm. as insurance i mean even if he does go motor pool and he gets a couple of m8s a, a single half track can't deal with that by itself and you know sometimes m8 rifle pushes the half track dies you know even with an immobilized uh m8 and you just need something to finish it off and the martyr is going to be the uh the tool for the task gotcha and again we just see your assault grenadiers just kicking ass and taking names here uh, you just chewed through a whole bunch of Rifleman squads again down south. Rifleman sticky bombing up your uh, armored car there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but your guys are just tearing them up. And they are Vet 2 Rifleman too, so they are no slouches there. The Something that the, the, uh, the Stern Givers are really good at is what's shown right there is chasing down squads <laughs> to kill off veterancy like that. Wow. Letting uh, uh, U.S. veterancy uh, 2 and 3 especially is very, very dangerous against uh, your Panzer Grenadiers. And being able to stop the veterancy or kill off the vetted squads is very, very important to do, uh, just for your late game survival. 
I see, I'm looking over here on the right-hand side of the map, and I see quite a lot of Germans running around with Browning automatic rifles, so that's that's got to be fortuitous. <laughs> yeah, the, the nice thing about the G43s is uh, you only get upgraded with two of them, but you still have an open weapon slot, so it lets you pick up a bazooka or a, uh, a BAR, and the having G43 squads vet three with BARs is just <laughs> incredible <laughs> damage output. Yeah, that is awesome there. Okay, 